Hi guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. I'm Leo from MediaWay and today I'm going to show you how to put together this cinematic superhero animation. I'll teach you how to use the non-linear animation feature to retime and extend animation, how to use video clips as scene lighting, plus a load more pro tips. And if you hang on to the end, I'll show you how I added to the scene to create something even more awesome. Let's get started. We're going to start off by getting the assets ready for the animation. If you head over to pexels.com and search for explosion, then click on the videos little button. This explosion here is going to be perfect for the background. It's rated CC0 so we're free to use it. Click on free download. Next head on over to mixamo.com. This is a great free site for getting characters and character animation. Here we're going to select one called Dreyar. Next click on the animations tab. Type in walk and we can see our character walking. If you click the button that says in place, that'll mean he moves without walking. That means we can control how far he walks. Hit download. You can leave all the options at default and press download. Okay, here we are in Blender. Let's press A to select everything, X to delete everything, click that. Now we're gonna add in a plane, Shift A, Look for mesh, plane, S to scale it up. Let's make it a bit bigger. Doesn't have to be precise, something around there will be fine. Let's see what that is. Uh, 12 meters square. Gonna import our model from Mixamo next. So you go to import FBX, go to your downloads folder and you find your download from Mixamo. If you just toggle this armature down here and click automatic bone orientation, We'll make sure the bones are not sticking out in a weird way. S to scale, scale him down. If you look on dimensions over here, scale him down to around two meters high. He's a big guy. Okay, if you press your space bar, we'll see he's already walking, but he stops quite soon. Okay, so with the armature selected, you can see the animation frames here, 32 frames. If you hop into the animation tab at the top, and make sure this one is set to non-linear animation. And you can see the 32 frames of walk there as well. So what we do, we hit this little button here that pushes down and makes it into action. Now if you press the N on your keyboard, click on the strip, let's just move this up a bit here. If you click on action clip here, you can actually change the playback speed using this playback toggle here. So if we set it to four, he actually walks four times slower. You can see him walking slower here. So what we're gonna do, we'll set it to 1.5 for now and we'll repeat it so it lasts 20, a full 250 frames. Okay, now we've got the walk cycle. It's a bit slower than normal and it's repeated for eight, eight times. Hop back into your layout tab. Obviously he's walking, but he's not moving. So what we're going to do now is just keyframe so he moves along the screen. This animation is only going to be about 150 frames long, so we'll just change that so it's 150. And what we'll do, if you, with the armature selected, just press I to insert a location keyframe. Move to 150, press G to grab, Y to move along the X axis and move him to about here and press I for another keyframe and a location keyframe. So now we've got location keyframes at the start and end of the animation. Now the default behavior of animation in Blender is to have a Bezier interpolation, which means it starts off moving slowly, gets up to full speed and slows down towards the end. The shortcut key to change this is T, and if you change it to linear interpolation, the speed is the same now throughout the clip. And actually, by fluke, we've got that about right. If 
he was walking too slowly, you can see now his heel is sliding backwards. And likewise, if he's moving not far enough, you'll see his, he's like moonwalking across the place. So just change your keyframe until it looks about right and his heel is not sliding as he walks. Next, we're going to add in an explosion behind him. So if you go to File, Import, Images as Planes. Now if you don't have that already installed, just check your preferences. Search for Images. And make sure this is uh, clicked on. Go to your Downloads folder. Click on your Pixels video and click Import Images as Planes. Press R on your keypad and then X. I'm going to rotate it and type in 90. That rotates it by 90 degrees. S to scale, make it a bit bigger. G to grab, Y to grab on the X axis. G to grab, Z to grab on the Z axis. And we're going to put it behind him, somewhere like that. All right, let's hop into cycles mode. We're going to change the renderer to cycles. And I'm using K cycles, which is a bit faster than the regular cycles window, but generally everything's more or less the same. Um, we'll just change the samples to 32 for now and uh, click on denoise if you have it. I'm using the ultra denoiser built into K cycles. Okay. So what happens is the world is, world color is set here. So we'll switch this to black. So there's no light coming in from the world. And here on our plane, everything's black at the minute. Click on your shading tab. Right, we've got a basic shader set up already. We don't need the alpha channel because there is none, but we're gonna set the color to the emission channel here. So the color goes to both the base color and the emission. And we'll put the emission strength up to five. Back in render mode, you can see now we're getting a nice glow from the video. If you can't see the video, make sure you're not at frame zero because the video starts up on black. Now already, this is looking super cool. Next, we'll add the material to the floor. So click on your floor plane, click on your material settings and click new. If you click on the shading tab, we can actually edit this with the nodes set up. Let's call this floor. We're going to actually set up a super simple um, floor material here so it looks a bit like a road with puddles on. So if you press Shift and A, you're going to search for a noise texture. We'll pop that over there. Then we're also going to add Shift and A, search for a color ramp. Pop that in there. And we're going to connect the color to the roughness channel. And we're going to check the factor from the noise checker into the factor here. So now, if you actually move these little control handles, you can actually start to see what we've got is a mixture of glossy reflective material and non-reflective material. Let's just change the base color to black. So all you need to do is just tweak these settings here. And if you change the scale, we can change how much detail there is in the floor. And the detail kind of adds just extra extra bits to the noise. So you can increase the detail a bit. There's no right or wrong here. You can just mess with it until you kind of got it how you like it. And if you don't want these glossy parts to be 100% reflective, if you click on the black color, click on the black here and you just move that up to gray. As you move to gray, it gets less and less reflective. So just set it so you've got something you're happy with. Back to the layout tab. Going to add in a camera, shift A, camera. Now the camera's been added at the um, default position, but what I like to do is position roughly with the viewport where I want the camera to be. So really sort of directly in front of him. Then you press control, alt, zero on the number pad and that actually puts the camera where your viewport is. Then if you press shift and tilde, 
you can actually move the camera using the W, A, S and D keys till it's about where you want it. In fact, what we'll do, we'll just set the focal length to be a bit more pers a bit more zoomed in. So go for 80, no, let's go for 90 millimeters. Press your shift and tilde key again. We just come out of here. Basically what we're looking for is to have that background, the video background to be totally filling the camera viewport. So with the camera selected, just maybe reset these degrees so they're so it's absolutely square on. And then you can actually adjust the Y distance and the Z position to fill the screen. So now we kind of go from blackness to having the explosion behind coming out like that. Looks really super cool. One final touch we can add to add a little bit more depth to the scene is some volume fog. So if you press shift A, we're going to add in a cube. And this, we're going to fill this, instead of having a texture on the cube, we're actually going to fill this with fog. So press S to scale, G to grab, just move it roughly in the middle of your scene. It might be helpful if you're in a different mode here. Okay. So basically we just need enough, enough cube to cover the scene. Go to materials tab, click new material. We'll call this fog. So where it says surface, you can actually click principled BSDF and click remove that. And where it says volume, we're going to click principled volume. And this actually, you can see it straight away, it's added quite a thick fog to the scene just within the cube. So we're going to change the density to 0.1. Let's go back into cycles mode. You can see now we've got this lovely sort of orange haze coming, wrapping itself around the, the figure from the fire. And you can actually increase the density till, you, till you're happy with it. And maybe increase the size of the cube as well. S to scale, X, Y to scale on the Y axis. And you suddenly get this super cinematic, beautiful looking volume on there. I'll just show you without. Without you've got kind of normal contrast, you switch it on, suddenly everything gets muted. You get a super cinematic look. You can also add some focus on the camera. So click your camera. I'm gonna add depth of field on. We're gonna use the focus object as our armature. And you can increase how much focus you've got by changing the f-stop. So point one makes it super out of focus sort of 10 or 11 you can't see any focus at all so if you go for something around f2 it's usually about right let's hit f12 and do a quick render that is looking super cool to render out your animation you need to choose where to save it so click on this little icon that looks like a printer output properties choose somewhere on your computer choose ff MPEG video, set the encoding to MPEG4, and I usually like to set this to perceptually lossless, no audio. Let's render that out by clicking render, render animation. Once your animation's finished rendering, you can actually view it by clicking on your render tab and clicking view animation. That looks great. Right, I'm going to spend a few more minutes working on this and adding some extra stuff in to make it even cooler. And then I'll get back to you with the results shortly. Okay guys, I've spent a few more hours tinkering with the scene. Now what I've done, I've added a few things. So I've added some rubble and this sort of gothic arch from Blender Kit. Uh, you can download Blender Kit for free. I think these models are free, but I do pay for Blender Kit and they might not be. The other thing about it is if you can see on the back of our character, we've now got a cloak that was added. It's a cloth sim and it's a bit janky, but from the front you can't see it, so it kind of flows with the simulation. The last thing I've added is an exploding sheet of glass. You can see it at the back here. Now I've used the RBD Lab add-on. There's a link in the description below. 
And it's basically just a very simple, quick glass simulation that it kind of brings it all together. So from the camera viewport, it looks like this. Well, actually, it doesn't. It looks like this. So let's render it out and then you can take a look and see what you think.